Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our carpet insulation segment. In this video, we're going to try and wrap up the final insulation of our carpet kit and then also the uh, padding that's going to go underneath it in specific areas. You can see I've already pre-installed our passenger side gunnel uh, coming down the side here and then going into our footwell of our pocket corner installed there and then also our footboard put back. So uh, what I'm trying to do here, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to uh, stretch this guy out here, get it stuck down, and then pad it out without getting any wrinkles in it. So uh, later we'll go ahead and uh, go over the driver's side and I can show you what I found out there. But first I think what we'll do, let's head into the shop. I wanna take this uh, uh, tunnel access cover here. We're gonna get this stuck down using a little bit different type of contact cement. So first let's just take a quick look at our contact cements here and see what I'm using and why I'm using them. So our lock weld here, this is a real good contact cement uh, for automotive. It's high heat resistant so it won't delaminate um, when the car heats up, get out in the sun with the uh, windows rolled up. It get pretty hot inside. Regular contact cement will delaminate uh, so you need a high heat resistance to install your carpets. Also this is uh, really good for broad areas. It can be sprayed, uh, brushed, or rolled. Uh, and we're going to be doing a little bit of rolling uh, a little bit further down in our video. And then the other contact cement that I'm using here, uh, this is good for smaller areas. You've probably seen this uh, when I installed the headliner. This, this particular contact, you can use this for uh, rubber moldings. Um, you can use it for sticking down your upholstery, carpet, anything that you want that has a minimal contact area, a small contact area, but you need super holding power. This particular contact cement, I would say, has got 10 times the holding power that this one does. So even though you can uh, pull this one back up if you need to and service what's underneath it, uh, this particular one, you may not be able to get your product back up. Once this is stuck down, you could damage your carpet or upholstery trying to remove it. So um, only use this one when you need super holding strength. So here's a look at our original. You can see how that was installed. A lot of relief cuts in there, trying to make that turn. Uh, real tight corners in there. And it uh, looks like they contact cemented 100% uh, of everything, uh, going straight onto the metal there, no padding. Uh, but I'm gonna use a little bit of padding uh, just to make it nicer. And also I put a bevel uh, on the edge of my padding here, just taking a razor blade and bevel that. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna use our super adhesive on the uh, metal edge outer metal edge here and in this template in here uh, go ahead and coat that up applying it by finger and then you can see I've got my outline here um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to overshoot this area and apply all this uh, area here uh, also with finger to get it spread out making sure we get some coverage over the line there that way no matter what we'll have a, a good surface area for it to stick to. Uh, sometimes if you miss, your contact's not gonna stick at all. You need both, both sides of your surface to have cement on it in order for it to stick. Rub it down in there. Okay, I think that should do it for that piece. You can see here, I'm just a little bit over the line um, all the way around. We'll let that dry and get our other piece coated. Alright, that's pretty much what that's going to look like. Keeping off of the foam here so we can stretch and pull over that. And then uh, we'll do the bottom side in here after we get the side stuck down. And that's what your finger is going to look like after you get done. Uh, only way to get that off is with lacquer thinner. Okay, so she's all dry now. We're just going to go ahead and center her up on her piece. And then I'm going to be pulling this direction to stick the outside edges and center first. 
right there. And what that'll do, that'll keep it nice, in a nice stretched taunt area across the center. If we go the other way uh, and stretch that one first, then we'll end up with a bag in the middle. And we're just slowly working it. Pulling up and just tacking. Uh, once we get everything where we like it and it looks good, um, then we can go ahead and press it down. Right now we're just tacking. Okay, well, looks like that's going to work. Nice and tight on there, got plenty of poof and uh, no bags in it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and press out the sides, iron it out, make sure it's really stuck. Okay, uh, next we're going to go ahead and coat the inside edge here uh, so that this has something to stick to. Okay, while that's drying, let's go ahead and put our relief cuts in there. Let's fold them over. Just press it down in that corner, nice and tight. Any little bit of contact cement will grab it and hold on to it. All right, and then for our finished look here, that's pretty much what it's going to look like. A little bit of puff in there. Everything stretched nice and tight. And then also, uh, we want to poke a, an all through our uh, screw holes make sure we go all the way through and then trim out a little bit of area on the back side there and then our screws we're going to use uh, using a, a new uh, stainless steel polished head with a washer underneath it that's going to hold it down like so all right let's take it outside and put her on all right and then the uh, inside here we're just preparing now we're just basically trimming off any excess here around and then taking our haul, finding our speed nuts and uh, making sure we got our holes poked through there. Okay and then just getting all four screws started together otherwise it's going to be real difficult to find those holes in there and then go ahead and screw her down evenly. And then as it snugs down, it just kind of comes into shape. So, a little contour going there. And being careful not to over torque it, as we could strip out our speed nuts. All right, looking good. Everything's fitting down in there nice and snug. A bit of padding on the top there. Looks great. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. So the next piece we're going to put into place here is going to be our driver's side pocket. Uh, we're going to be uh, brush contacting the rear section here and uh, some of this front area. And then uh, in this area here we're going to use our super adhesive uh, on the face and on the backside edge of our weather strip channel. And uh, that's going to come down right into here and to be held down into place with our carpet threshold. Let's go ahead and take a look at this piece and see what that looks like. So here's a close-up look at our original that came out of there. 
Uh, the only difficult part about installing this one, I guess, would be the uh, piece of upholstery here that wraps around our weather strip channel. And uh, the whole trick to this one is trying to get this this uh, mass here to be as even as we can, although usually there's some taper to it uh, because the uh, weather strip channel is actually wider at the bottom uh, as it comes down the post there. And then looking at our new piece here, so you can see they have a little bit of extra upholstery material there. So we'll go ahead and trim this here and down below. And then once we get it stuck onto our uh, weather strip channel, we'll go ahead and trim this back. We'll try and get it as straight as possible, but there is a little bit of a taper to that uh, post in there. You can see here, a little bit wider at the bottom and a little bit narrow as it gets towards the top. Uh, but the main thing is that we don't put too much pressure in this area right here. We're not pulling too much there or here. And then looking at the inside of the pocket here, so this is a piece of cardboard that's been mounted to the inside. And what we're going to do, we're going to end up pre-bending it before we install it to get a little bit of a, uh, a stress shape going there. Uh, so we have a proper concave in there. That way it looks as close to the original as possible. If it's straight, that's really not what it should be. It should actually be a little bit of a positive curve there. Something like that. And then looking at it uh, in its mocked up position, so that's pretty much where it's going to go. Uh, tucked up under the dash there, right down onto our gunnel. And then this is uh, about how much we're going to have stuck down on our weather strip channel. So we're going to use a uh, paint roller to roll out our contact on this one. I'm using a small uh, miniature size roller with a 3 8 snap brush on there. We'll just go ahead and roll that out. We want basically 100% coverage on everything. And this is going to be the best way to get there and get there quickly. Now, the whole trick with contact cement is just put it on and stop. If you keep going over it, it'll start lifting back off. Some of this is going to be sticking to the body. Some of it's going to be making up our pocket. We just want to make sure we have enough wherever it needs to be so that it will stick when we want it to. And then down below the pocket to seal it off. And then our, our red line here is where our pocket is going to be formed. Bottom to seal it. Okay, let that dry and then we'll take a look at her. And then brushing out our inside. So using two kinds of contacts here to fasten this front edge, um, our spray grade on the inside, which is brushed out, and then our uh, super contact on our weather strip channel on the outside around that edge and in. That'll really hold it down. So it looks like our contacts dried up real nice here, uh, both sides. This is 100% contacted also. And then our uh, super adhesive over here. Folding over our edge. Okay, so from here, I think I'm just going to go ahead and reinstall our wooden floorboard 
and accelerator pedal and then uh, after that we'll go ahead and get started on our side. So looking at our wooden floorboards here, let's just see how they finish out. Here's our driver's side. Also the uh, details on the driver's side, a uh, little bit different configuration than our passenger side. See how everything tucks in there and uh, holds the carpet down and in place. Uh, also back up in this corner here, I had to do a little trimming of our insulation just to get everything seated in there. And then our passenger side. See how that floorboard holds everything in place there. Keeps it in there nice and tight. And then moving on to our side piece here. This one's really not too bad. Uh, basically just contact cementing and sticking it down. The only padding we're going to put in here is just going to be at the rear. Uh, a little bit of an indent in here by our rear seating. So uh, just making a template and a small sliver in there. That'll sit in here. Um, it'll give us a little cushion on the uh, seat and also fill that out. Uh, make sure we don't have any bags in our carpet. Over here on the uh, passenger side, you can see just a little bit of a, a poof there. Nice and soft. It's uh, nice and rigid right here where it sticks and rigid down here where it sticks, but we got a little, little cushion in there. So before we start gluing this up, uh, one of the things I learned on the passenger side uh, doing some mock-up here, uh, because what's going to happen is our rear quarter upholster panels are going to drop down into our car, but I just want to make sure everything's going to seat properly. Uh, but I can see here that our uh, quarter-inch dyno liner on uh, the protrusion of our uh, wheel well here uh, this is going to be a little bit too dense of a foam, so it's not going to give in um, like we needed to. I needed to compress farther. So I'm just going to scrape that back uh, so we have some foam uh, layering on there, but we don't have the build, and that's going to allow this to draw up uh, a lot tighter when we get to that. So let me go ahead and scrape those off there before we lay our carpet in there, and that'll save us a little time down the road. So just a quickie look here at the paint tray and roller I'm using to spread out my contact. Uh, what I'm using is just a standard paint tray uh, with a disposable liner. And the best type of uh, liners to use is going to be these dot impregnated liners. And what they do, they actually even out, you can see when I roll it, press it out, it's going to even out the contact on your roller. And that's what you want. If you have the chevron uh, pattern in your paint tray, that's not going to work very well at all. And then also, uh, here's my uh, pads I'm using and then a heavy lid to sit on here in between coats and then just roll in or out. Also you can see I've got my red sharpie marks uh, for all my reference that I've transferred from my uh, original templates. I'm not going to cut anything at this point. I'm just marking the backside as to where the originals were. And 100% roll out on this piece here. So on the inside, I'm just coming up onto the front of that carpet there just a little bit so we get some kind of adhesion there. Um, and then down into this cove area, I want the carpet stuck down in there pretty good as our seat rail extenders are going to go in there. 100% uh, everything here. And then just staying away from our foam padded sliver there. Everything else is pretty much going to get coated right up to the edge. And then we'll have to find our screw holes as we go, working from the front to the back. And then following it up with a screw. That way when we're pulling on it, nothing gives away there. And then we'll just do that working front to back. I like to open it up just a little bit bigger than we need there. That's going to get covered with a threshold anyways. stretching and pulling. So once we have the front pinned down and fairly secure there, our next anchoring point is going to be the seat belt anchor point. Uh, so we have to cut a hole in there very carefully and then uh, stick the front edge and then just kind of massage 
you know, like a cone shape around it and then work and stretch downwards. All right, let's take a look at our finished product here and see how we did. So this whole piece here just took about 45 minutes to completely stretch it out, stick it down, and work out all little things going on with it. Um, if you're having an area where you're uh, having some troubles getting it to conform to the shape, uh, say for instance this area here, this is a real tight and uh, very difficult area to get to stay stuck. So we have an inside radius, fairly tight there, outside radius, followed by another outside radius. Um, so what I did there, when I got to that area, uh, one coat of contact cement wasn't going to do it. So I just lifted it up, uh, put another coat on both surfaces, let it dry, and then re-stretched and pulled, and that stuck it down. You can see here, it really fit that shape nicely. Now, one of the things I like about this carpet, it has just enough stretch and flex in it to get it to do everything you want it to do. So next, let's go ahead and do our front piece here. Um, I've got it mocked up centered uh, left to right over our tunnel and then also uh, sitting right down on the top surface of it. Uh, that's going to locate my seat belt holes right here and then uh, it's going to wrap over our lip, our seat lip there and that's going to be where it's going to end up. Um, if our border here was a little bit longer and could land down in here this would look uh, really clean but it's a little bit far forward uh, for my liking so what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and peel this carpet up uh, put a little bit of filler in this front edge here so we can hopefully make a little bit better transition there and uh, correct that shape in there and the fill. Let me go ahead and play with that and we'll take a look at it. Alright, so I got uh, a little bit of foam built up in here uh, making a little bit wider transition at the front. I think that should do it. I pulled the carpet over it and it looks good. So let me go ahead and stretch that out. We'll stick it down and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so that's stretched out real nice. Um, you can see now, you can get the camera down here at the angle. Um, our angle coming down here is ending right up on our uh, front lip. Uh, plenty of padding in there. And then also uh, a little bit broader width at the front here. That should match our profile on our carpet a little bit better. So for our last two pieces of carpet, uh, I've gone ahead and cut up some quarter inch foam here. And uh, what that's going to do, that's going to give us just a little bit of fill uh, in these areas where we need it. You can see that lip there uh, needs a little bit of build up on it before we stretch over that. Uh, and then also our rear seating area, it wouldn't hurt to put a little padding in there. Let me go ahead and stick those down and then we'll take a look at it. Our foam pads are stuck down and our front piece is mocked up here. And so what I'm doing with this yellow tape is I'm just kind of referencing where our seamed edge is going to end up. I want to make sure I don't get any contact cement uh, past that point. Also, um, because we have such minimal contact area for our contact cement and to actually hold this into place here, we need to really stretch and pull on it. Uh, we're going to need some really good adhesion. So in these yellow areas, I'm going to use our uh, super adhesive and then double coat uh, everything else. Let me go ahead and get that rolled out and then we'll take a look at it. So taking a look at our contact cement here as it's drying up. So this should give us enough hold down power right where um, our detailed areas are. So once we start stretching and pulling on it, uh, we'll run the risk really of it popping loose and uh, coming undone at some point. But that should hold it down there. And then uh, double coating down here where we're going to stretch and stick at the bottom. And then looking at our front piece here, so you can see where I've got my contact rolled out. A little bit of free space there for stretch. And then our uh, corner areas here. This is where I want to really uh, stretch it out tight and detail those edges. Make sure it stays stuck. All right, let's go put her on. So getting it into position, we're just tacking the center first and then just kind of working our line here. I want to make sure that this, uh, this is the right shape we want here before we start pulling on it. So molding our front piece into shape there. Seems like that's got plenty of holding power on there now. So I'm going to go ahead and pull uh, from the right once I get that side stuck. Then I'm going to go ahead and pull from the left. Alright, let's take a look at her. So here's our front nose piece. And 
and then looking at our corners. Our screw holes figured out there. So we're stretching over our tunnel. A nice stretched out fit in there and uh, plenty of padding. All right, let's get going on our last piece. So starting point for this one is going to be just kind of massaging down and getting stuck in the center here. Uh, once that's in place, then we can pull and stretch. All right, that one's not quite stretching out like I'd hoped. So what I'm doing here, I'm just peeling it back. Um, also, peeling back our foam to make sure it's not overlapping onto our carpet here. It's going to make for a little bit better uh, transition when we do stretch over that. So what I'm going to need to do here, I'm going to need to contact cement 100% uh, backside of the foam and the carpet. Stretch, pull, and stick, and try it again. Let's see if that works. Okay, that works better. Definitely happy with that. Well, that stretched out a lot better, so let's take a look at it and see how we did. So we're all stuck down here. Got a nice, uh, nice tight seam to the bottom. Coming up our side here, tucked right into the corner. And then coming down this side. So everything's starting to have a nice stretched out, form-fitted feel to it. So the thing with carpet uh, is forgiving, um, unless you cut it in the wrong spot. Uh, fairly forgiving in the fact that uh, if you don't like the way it's stretching and fitting, you can always pull it up, recontact it, or super contact it and get it to do what you want. All right, let's go ahead and uh, finish putting in our final panels and take a look at her. So this will be our finished look then with our front mats in place. And then our rear mats setting down into place. So you can see now how all our overlaps, our corners, all our transitions, Everything kind of has a relationship with each other, so uh, yeah, when you're doing your carpet, uh, definitely mock-ups will uh, save you a lot of pain. And then also, uh, I've got a couple of jute padding uh, mats sitting down in there. Not sure exactly what's going to happen there until we get going on our jump seats. And then uh, coming up on our next video, we're going to start off uh, doing some upholstery work on our rear quarter panels, and then trim out all the hardware that goes in on top of this carpet for the final touch. All right, so there she is. We're looking at about 40 hours total to complete everything you saw here in these two videos. Also, uh, contact cement. Use right out about a gallon of our uh, spray grade material, brushing and rolling that out to get everything stuck down. So if you're doing your carpet kit, I wish you guys the best of luck. Uh, things to remember here, really just go slow. Be careful of your cuts and uh, be careful not to drip any contact on your finished carpet. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next video.